Okay, welcome. Um, I think we have a couple of the seats up here. If the sun really bothers you, I think we have two or three seats over here for those of you who may have a sun problem. Um, I'm Carol Domacy. I'm the president of the Golden Rain Foundation. Uh, first, I'm going to start with an apology. Uh, the wind blew South Korea off before we cut the continents. And we were reminded repeatedly today that uh, South Korea is not up there. So we'll take care of that. <laughs> That's not a problem. Um, I'd like to welcome Mr. Bud Sedback, uh, who is the, uh, what, commander of the American Legion Post? And he's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance because this is Leisure World. Okay. I think it's behind the globe. Please stand if you can and repeat after me the pledge of allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the invocation will be by uh, Jim Greer, who is the president of the Interfaith Council. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we begin this dedication ceremony in honor of the restoration of this symbol of the leisure world community. We ask thy blessings on all who have diligently worked to restore and preserve this edifice. May this representation of the world that thou created be a reminder of our responsibility to care for it and for all thy children living thereon. We ask thy continued blessings upon those who will live within these gates and upon those who serve them. May thy inspiration be upon those who lead and protect us, that their efforts may be a reflection of their commitment to our safety and well-being, and inspire us that we may show respect and kindness toward those who we have, been elect we have elected from among us, and help each of us to actively participate in the process of self-government. We ask for thy blessing upon these among us, and those among us who may suffer, are limited in resources and capability, that we may be aware of their needs and do all that we can to assist and strengthen them. Loving Father, please be with us here today and inspire us to view this globe as a symbol of peace for this community and for the rest of the world. Amen. Okay, it's me again. Hmm. Um, in 1961, Ross Cortese was looking for something to make the front of Leisure World stand out, something that would show his vision for Leisure World. A guy who lived in the area came calling. He worked for QRS uh, Neon Corporation in LA. They did a lot of the work on Disneyland. In June of 1961, a lease was signed for a 30-foot globe, this one here, installed at the main entrance. A deposit of $4,536 was made in monthly payments of $1,512 for five years with a lease option for another five years. In October of 61, a second lease was signed for a 15-foot globe. How many people lived here long enough to have seen the 15-foot globe? Not many. Okay. <laughs> um, the second globe was, uh, had a lease also. It was a deposit of $2,364, and the monthly payment was $789. The same lease of five years with an option for five more. The smaller globe was installed in front of the amphitheater. The large globe was racked with problems. There were lights installed where all the leisure worlds were located. A fountain with colored lights was installed around the globe. The lights kept failing, the fountain cracked, and the globe stopped turning. Since the large globe set out in the middle of nowhere, the winds were pretty high. The spear, as Ross liked to call it, was made to slow down and even stop to a complete stop when the winds reached a certain velocity. The bearings field and failed and the kids from Seal Beach kept dumping soap in the fountain. Many a day there were bubbles running down Seal Beach Boulevard. One of our current GRF directors was one of those kids, but I'm not going to give you her name. <laughs> was it me? I came from New Jersey. Uh, there was a lawsuit filed by GRF against QRS Neon because of the maintenance issues. 
Finally, an offer was made by GRF to purchase both globes, a check for $35,882.27 was cut and both globes became the property of the Golden Age Foundation. Golden Rain Foundation, sorry, I used to belong to the Golden Age too. Uh, the 15 foot globe was scrapped when the administration was built. In my mind, one of the worst decisions ever made by Leisure World. The 30 foot globe turned for the last time in 2012. Our then president, Tim Bolton, right after he became president, ordered it to be turned back on for an hour a day. That lasted for a couple of months and it stopped never to turn again. A couple of interesting facts. The salesman from QRS Neon ended up moving to Leisure World and he became president of Mutual 16. And the statue of Twiggy in front of the administration was also purchased from the same company and donated to Leisure World as a gift from Roth Ross Cortese. Early in 69, I saw the globe for the first time. A few friends and I drove past the globe heading to Seal Beach. I asked what it was doing in the middle of nowhere. One of my friends, who ended up living in Leisure World years later herself, said that's Leisure World and that's where they keep the old people. <laughs> Fast forward 47 years and here I am, one of the old people. Not only one of the old people, but the president of the old people. After I moved to Leisure World, I found how far off base my friend was. The dream Ross Cortese had for Leisure World was the right one an active community with people from all over the world, and the Globe signifies that. A couple of years ago, the, the Orange County Board of Supervisors named the Globe as one of the 125 unique symbols of Orange County. Now I'd like to present Sandra Masalevit, the mayor of Seal Beach. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure to be here. I've lived in Leisure World for 26 years, along with my husband, and um, he's back there in the corner trying to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a real uh, interesting experience. Uh, I've gotten to know a lot of great people, and um, when I ran for the city council, uh, half of those great people voted for me, and that was really nice. And now I'm on your city council, and um, I try to do as much for Leisure World and the city and get them to coordinate some of the activities that are important to all of us. I try to get the council here more frequently than they ever were before. And uh, vice versa, I'm hoping that uh, you all will take an interest in what goes on in the city and come to a council meeting um, or watch it on TV. It's on Channel 3 at, uh, on every other Monday night, second and fourth Monday. And uh, I hope uh, you enjoy it. And I, want, I just want to say that um, I admire the current board and the past board of uh, Golden Rain Foundation so much because of what they've been able to do. They are people with vision and they listen. They've uh, listened to you all, you know that. Um, and when it was time to redo the globe, it was a very important symbol to a lot of us and I was always in favor of the globe being restored. And here we are, and it's beautiful, and uh, enjoy it, and it is our symbol. The world will know about it. And um, thank you all for coming. Oh, that's right. Some of my colleagues are here. Um, I'd like to introduce Mike Virapapa. And David Sloan is the other city council member from Leisure World, and unfortunately, um, my, uh, Gary Miller uh, couldn't make it this, uh, to this today. And Ellery Deaton is on a cruise in Panama. So she has um, an excuse. And the interim chief of police is Joe Miller. He's sitting back here. 
you can say hello to him after we're, we're finished. I'm sure he'd love to meet you all. Thank you. The, I'd like to introduce the past, mem past president of the Golden Rain Foundation, uh, Rondi Winkler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. What a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I was president when the decision was made by the board of directors to go ahead and restore the globe. Of course, at that time, we didn't know the challenges, and we hemmed and we hawed. Sydney Merrifield went and pushed us and, and the Orange County Historical Society because this is a symbol. Uh, you reach the beach when you get past this globe. And so finally, one board member who will remain no, uh, nameless uh, just made a comment, and it passed. He said, you have a fiduciary responsibility to maintain this globe. So here we are. And we have gone for, well, maybe three, four months. Well, it'll be six, seven months. Uh, a year has passed. Well, it's probably going to be at least another three or four months because there was many, many challenges. And I don't have all the expertise to tell you about all of them. But there are some people here that really get credit for moving that from maybe someday to soon, to sooner, to soonest. And finally, somebody said, well, it's going to be, uh, the dedication is October 8th. To me, a great deal of credit goes to, one is David Rudge, who you may not have heard his name, but he's the project coordinator. This man had to come up <laughs> with the right metal and then make sure that the company used the right metal. Uh, there was just so many challenges with it. And after David, of course, is our facilities director, Mark Weaver, who also pushed and worked very, very hard. And a man that gets special credit for this because he got all the naysayers, believe me, was our executive director, Randy Ankeny. So here we are today. They pushed, they pulled, they struggled. Uh, everybody knows how to restore a globe now <laughs> on our upper echelon, uh, I guess. And of course, uh, Randy, you'd have to correct me if I'm wrong, United Riggers, did they still finish it up? I'm not sure. Uh, but this was the kind of work that this team had to do. There should be a fire engine before long. <laughs> but I am so proud of being able to sit here with you today. I hope you take the time to go past it at night, too. It is really very pretty. And I do know that plans are afoot by the uh, ADRC. That's a new committee, if you're not familiar with it, the Architectural Design and Review Committee, that they will be sprucing all this up. So if you take all these walls and what have been done with them, and you take fixing this up, this is going to be the place to be. People come down that 405 freeway, they see that globe, they know they have a ride, and so have we. Thank you. All right. Now, I'm not going to mention any names, but the man that is nameless is next. Uh, your <laughs> GRF representative from Mutual 14 and our physical property chair for the foundation, Barry Lukoff. <laughs> he just punched this through. Thank you, Rondi. I too want to pay tribute to David Rudge and Mark Weaver for all the work they did on this. This was an astounding job they took upon themselves. <laughs> Hundreds of hours. Does, he, raise your hands. Let them know who you are. Dozens of trips learning metallurgy and the paint and the problems of a marine environment and unfortunately all that knowledge we'll probably never need again. <laughs> anyway, anyone who's ever read anything I've written would notice that I try and be simple, succinct, and to the point. But this is a different kind of day for me and my inner frustrated Herman Melville comes out and I feel the urge to pontificate a little. If you'll bear with me for just a few moments. 
our president, Carol Domacy, told you the history of the globe, and Rondi hinted at all the problems that we had, but I'd like to try to put it in a greater context. My wife and I spent last summer in France. We drove the country from Paris to Normandy, from Bordeaux to Monaco, and back to Paris, staying at small local hotels and nearly invisible inns where the bread is baked fresh daily and the cheese comes from the neighbor down the road. We spent many days in nearly forgotten towns like Sarlat, where it is said that St. Bernard performed the miracle of the healing loaves, or Amboise, where Leonardo da Vinci lived out his final years. We explored UNESCO heritage cities like the papal city of Avignon and Carcassonne, ground zero of the 13th century religious heresies and the wars that followed. In the Loire Valley at an abandoned 11th century Orthodox monastery, we saw what had been until recently the secret burial site of the late actor Yule Brenner. Everywhere we went in France, no matter where we turned, history surrounded us. 30,000 year old cave art in the Aquitaine region, Henry II's castle at Chinon, streets named after the astronomer Kepler or the writer Alexandre Dumas or the artists Renoir or Seurat. Even on a small side street in Avignon, there was a commemorative plaque placed on the former home of a local doctor who was tortured and killed by the Nazis. It's been said that a history forgotten is a fear lost. Unlike we in Southern California who seemingly can't wait to tear down our history and build something new, the Europeans live amidst their history, and to them it's not lost. It surrounds them, it envelops them, it embraces them, and gives them their identity. To paraphrase Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. Our founder, the late Ross Cortez, was a visionary who saw the benefits of cooperative living. He looked into the future and envisaged, envisioned this active, thriving community of seniors. He could foresee the clubhouses, the golf course, the swimming pool. And this globe, which we are here to rededicate, was a gift to our community and a constant reminder of a gentle past filled with memories. Ross Cortese had that vision, and we today are still fulfilling his vision. The commentator Eric Severide said, you can't know who you are as a nation or a people unless you know where you've been. Well, with our restored globe as a witness, I'll take that a little further and say that today, I believe we can now even peer a little into the future. And for this community, I can see that the future looks very bright indeed. Thank you. Well, we were going to have a ribbon cutting, but somebody stole a ribbon. Uh, <laughs> so we're not going to have one. But I'd like to thank Tommy Folletto and Terry DeLeon for everything they've done today, except next time we need more tents. And David Drudge is hiding over there, and we've made his life miserable for the last year and a half. Uh, it even got down to the end when they went to paint it, and they said, excuse me, you haven't treated the screws, and the paint won't stick to them. So they had to take the screws out and and um, etch them so that they could take the paint. It's an interesting thing, but you can't buy continents on eBay. So these had to be special made. Uh, over there is also Randy Ankney, who's put up with all this aggravation for the last year, and Mark Weaver. Oh, I see Kathy Thayer's hiding over there, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, behind us, we have the GRF Board of Directors, the mutual presidents and their spouses. And uh, I just want to thank you all for coming. Uh, this globe has, <laughs> it's been an interesting experience and I sincerely hope that going forward it'll be a lot uh, easier to take care of the next time around, especially if we take care of it on a regular basis. And I'd like to thank, oh, on-site sales gave us all the water and stuff. That was very nice of them. So I'd like to thank you all for coming. Get out of the sun. <laughs> Bye.